The State of Crypto is presented by Tron, connecting the world to the power of cryptocurrency. Time to check in with Nick Day, our managing editor of Global Policy and Regulation and the editor of the State of Crypto Newsletter. What's up, Nick? Good morning. Good to see you. So a bunch of new developments. Let's start with this Solana lawsuit. What is that about? Yeah, so uh, sometime last week, an investor in Solana and the SOL token uh, sued Solana Labs, Multicoin Capital, as well as a couple other major players in the Solana ecosystem on allegations that they basically uh, sold uh, Solana tokens as an unregistered security, uh, allowed you know allocated a large number to uh, insiders or to you know gave special uh, purchase rights to certain parties uh, outside of the public sale, and uh, that they you know basically uh, violated federal securities laws and lost value from the token. Um, the same individual, uh, or sorry, the same law firm that has sued a number of other entities before, including companies like Binance US. So, um, you know, I imagine we'll probably see a couple of these, you know, pop up even more as the bear market continues. And uh, too early to say yet how far this will get in the judicial system. That was actually going to be my next question, which you just answered. Um, so let's just turn to another topic, um, which we mentioned briefly in the intro. It looks like the U.S. is well. Actually, that looks like um, looks like the U.S. is closing a loophole um, for uh, for officials that invest in crypto. They no longer can invest in crypto and also make crypto policy. Anything notable here, or is this just something that was kind of bound to happen and, and, and just sort of makes sense logically? Yeah, it, I don't know. It does feel like it was kind of inevitable. I mean, so this is the office, the government office of ethics. Basically, it only applies to the executive branch uh, employees. So, you know, Congress unaffected. So, you know, lawmakers who are investing in crypto can continue doing whatever they were doing, introducing bills, trying to uh, pass legislation. If you work for the executive branch or you work for one of the uh, agencies within the executive branch's umbrella, then you are barred from owning crypto and simultaneously writing policy about crypto. Now, the only real uh, example that we have here is a White House policy advisor named Tim Wu, who uh, is heavily invested in Bitcoin and Filecoin and a couple other tokens, I believe. But he also voluntarily recused himself from cover, you know, writing crypto policy or advising on crypto matters back when he first took on the role. So, it you know, it's hard to say what the actual impact of this is at this point. Uh, we haven't heard of any other employees or you know officials who are invested in crypto who are working on this policy. Now, you know the objection from the industry is probably going to be along the lines of you have to you know be able to play around with crypto to understand it to you know write policy that is comprehensive and addresses it. I'm not sure necessarily that this will you know bar you from doing that. It's just going to bar you from owning it as a personal investment, but. You know, if the government has some kind of you know common wallet setup or something that would allow employees to play around with it, they could still theoretically, you know, learn from you know whatever tools they have. Uh, but yeah, really, uh, like I said before, it just is too hard to say at this point what the actual impact will look like. And quickly, Nick, we got to wrap. But just, Ed, do you have any quick thoughts on Boris Johnson? What that might mean for the crypto industry? Uh, we're about to publish something, I think. I mean, you know, just like weeks ago that. The UK said it wanted to be a crypto hub. All of that's probably in doubt now. A lot of the officials who were on that statement, you know, are leaving now. So the MPs, some of the, uh, you know, I don't know what to call the cabinet ministers, I guess. Um, so it's probably going to be whatever might happen might still happen, but it's going to take a little bit longer. And we're probably going to see some, you know, not chaos, but a bit of a mess as they try to figure out, A, Johnson hasn't actually resigned, as far as I can tell. He just said he will resign if someone is uh, appointed to succeed him. So uh, I imagine that's going to be a little bit of a you know, a talking point for the parliament right now. Um, but then B, also, who's going to be taking on these roles to you know, cabinet ministers to uh, succeed the ones who have left, and what are their views? So it's going to be an interesting thing to observe.